Oh yeah, that house is a rockin'. Hey there, everybody. This is Grammy Mary here on World Truth Radio and RealLibertyMedia.com Channel 9. Also on the WorldTruth.org Spreaker channel, and that was Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, and I'll bet you Larry's not listening in. Shame on him, because I know he loves his Stevie Ray. Just gotta say. <laughs> Oh, it is a wackadoodle Wednesday, and yeah, the first Wednesday of the year, actually, and it doesn't feel any different from any of the other Wednesdays that we've had, other than, oh yeah, we have more crap in the news, and I just keep wondering, you know, all of this stuff that's in the news, are they drawing attention to things so that we don't pay attention to other things? Hmm, inquiring minds time. One of the things that I'd noticed, you know, you see, I kept seeing all of these links to Dangleberry signing a E-I-E-I-E-I-O about, um, oh, gun laws, more gun restrictions, more this, more that, more the other thing, whatever. It's a fucking E-I-E-I-E-I-O. And who had three minutes in? <laughs> Because there you go, three minutes in, and I got it. Okay, let me see. Who's over here on uh, World Truth real quick? I believe I saw BB9, but I don't think he's listening in because BB's got his own show on Wednesday nights. Bless his heart. He can't listen to me anymore, damn it. And I can't listen to him. I'll have to listen to his podcast. That's all there is to it. Um, let's see. Yeah, BB9, TD Sanders, and Mary B. And looky there, Marcos is here as well. And Marcos has been posting some funny stuff on my wall again today. I do believe Atrax has posted some stuff over here. And so has Costin, which I will get to Costin's here in just a little bit. Okay, let me go see who is over in the RLM. Oh, shit. And you know what? I totally spoused off opening my Twitter. Because, yeah... I'm so good at tweeting. Oh, good Lord. I open up my Twitter and what the hell do I see but freaking Bozo. Dangleberry himself. Yippee-yay, Cal Petty. Uh, you know, have you noticed how much he has aged? I'm, And I'm not just talking the Grecian formula needing aging i'm talking the serious wow that job's really hard on a person isn't it i'm thinking it's very difficult on someone mm -hmm. especially him mm, darn careful what you wish for darling you just might get it and i think you just did yes goy this is live <laughs> yeah 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 Okay, over here in the RLM, who do I see but right there at the very top, Asmo again. Dang it, dude. I am so impressed. you got a hell of a string going here. I also see Barman is right behind him, and yeah, Barman, you know, I'm drinking water tonight, hon. I think I'll stick with that. I also see the lovely Beth Z is here, as well as my favoriteest heavy breather in the whole wide world. <sighs> Hi, Darth Rome's. Woohoo! That was so much fun. I didn't breathe real a lot of real heavy tonight though, because well, I'm trying to I'm trying to not catch the cold or bug or whatever the hell it is going around at work right now. Everybody there is hacking and wheezing and coughing and sneezing and snuffling and the whole shooting match. And I've been popping my on guard, which is um, essential oils. Just so you know, <laughs> it's called the protective blend now because if you have a proprietary name to it, the FDA tends to have a bit of an issue with it. So, yeah, yippee skippy. I also see Grimner is over here. Yes, F bomb prize. Oh, hey, there you go. Well, cool bomb. There you go. In any case, um, yeah, there's Grimner and the lovely Moose Girl. How did Zach play over the weekend, darling? Just curious. Uh, I also see the lovely Kate is here, as well as yours truly, Harassing the Help. I.B. Don C. is here. Hey there, darling. 
I hope everything's going well with your son. I see you've been catching up with him. I also see Java Doctor 2 is here as well as Apostle and Apostle 2000 who is in the future and yet not. Hmm. Are you being, um, yeah, biannual? Is that? <laughs> I know that's not what that means, but hey, it sounded good. I also see Beetle. Hey, dude. How's your hottie? Oh, never mind. Um. Oh, Zach wrote a mean bench. Oh, that sucks. My, yeah, both of my daughters did that as well um, in volleyball and uh, basketball. Well, they got to play a little bit more basketball, but yeah. Um, apparently, I don't have the right last name. And therefore, they don't have the right last name. And therefore, they got to spend an awful lot of time on the bench. They got pulled in whenever they needed someone that with a killer serve. In volleyball, you know, they got put in then. But other than that, no, no, they rode the bench. Uh, let's see. I also see N. Siv is over here as well as Goy Boy. Ooh, you're a Goy Boy, huh? Well, <laughs> I see Juana Taco is here as well. And looky there is Meisterbrow. Oslo is also here as well as Solvenur. Hey, Walter, how you doing, darling? Oh, and looky, looky, looky. It's Space Wolf. I love doing sound effects, even though I suck at it. I hate, I love doing it. And finally, to round out the crew, we have the one, the only Attrax. And look who just joined us. WTRLM Vince UCY. Hey there, darling. How you doing this evening? I hope you've had an awesome day. Or if not, I hope it was at least okay or not freezing. It's a little bit on the Bursey side out here, but, oop, I have a new message. Is that possibly Lino over here? It is Lino. Hi, Lino. Happy New Year to you, darling. How are you doing? I hope you're having a splendiferous New Year, although it's just like last year, except it's got a six at the end of it, which really, really, you know, I was so sure I was going to do really good. And Monday I was, I was doing really good at work. Hi, Rusty. I see you over here on WT. Um, I did really good with everything at work. And then I had a couple of checks I had to write. <laughs> yeah, I wrote 15 instead of 16 on my checks. Everything at work was real good. I, I put 16 on that, but you know, no, I had to put 15 on the checks, like a total dorkamus. Oh, I guess, you know, I had to do it, and now I'm paying really close attention to what I'm doing, and that's not going to keep me from putting a freaking 15 on shit again, just because it's too new in the year for this old batty woman. Um, hi, Ammo Box. Hi, Amazing Facts. They're new followers of mine over on Twitter, by the way. Um, let me see. Damn it. And I still... <laughs> I still don't have <laughs> 300 followers. I mean, I get up there, and then I lose a few. And then I get up there, and then I lose a few. Which is really kind of okay, because it, it makes me feel like, you know, I'm losing a tail. And I was really good at that. In high school, you know, if someone would be following me, of course, I was driving my mom's old Pontiac Catalina, which it wasn't old. It was a, um, or not old, old. Uh, she had a 72 Pontiac Catalina. Oh, my God, that thing ran like a striped ass tape, let me tell you. And I could lose people like none other with that thing. Yeah. No speeding tickets then, either. I didn't get any speeding tickets until after I got married. <laughs> I outran them. <laughs> Oops, did I say that out loud? Yes, I did. Um, what? Okay. Oh, today's your birthday? Well, happy birthday, Lino. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'd sing to you, but mm, I don't think everybody else needs to hear that. <laughs> you had many gifts and music. Well, I'm good, good. I need to give you, a, I'm not going to give you a happy music. What, 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 what? Yes, Graham. Java doctor. Java, 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 Java. 
Um, hey, <laughs> Grimmy just cracked the thousand mark. Well, and you know, my Facebook uh, bitch page, which there's not too many people that, you know, on the radio that know about it, but it's beer and ale party dot, um, over on Facebook. And I don't really do a whole hell of a lot on there. I mean, sometimes I'll post stuff from the radio on there, but you know, um, but that's kind of my, that's where I let my evil spirits out of the building place. And I get really snarky over there. And I used to, I used to write a lot of blogs, used to. I don't really write them so much anymore. And I r probably ought to get back into doing that because, yeah, mm, I really should. Just to, you know, if nothing else, expand my mind just to skosh or at least freaking exercise the damn thing. But, um... Yeah, Beer and Ale Party stands for uh, Begin Electing Ethical Representation and Against Legalized Extortion, which um, the Ale Party is following me over there. So, hey, <laughs> we're getting drunk over on Facebook. Is that okay with you? I hope it is. Yes, Lino. Um, just sing it now. <laughs> you don't know what you're asking for, darling. <laughs> People have heard me sing before, and they usually tell me, don't quit your day job. <laughs> yeah. I sing around the house, and that's because my, my critters can't tell me to shut the hell up. <laughs> and I sing with my grandkids because my grandkids really like it because I sing like a munchkin when I sing to them. Um, oh, and Grimmy's over here, too. Let's see. Oh, hey. Hi there. There's a picture of Peter Frampton. I had a major palpitation for him back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Way back in the day. Oy. Oh, well. Okay, let me see. What's going on here? Um, okay, I shared this over... And it's, it's videos, so I'm just going to share these on World Truth as well. I shared it over on the RLM. It's from Investment Watch, uh, investmentwatchblog.com. And it's, did you recognize the crisis actor behind Obama? Which, huh, you know, they're getting quite bold with that shit. You, have you noticed that? I have. It's like, really? How freaking stupid do you think we are? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Never mind. That was a rhetorical question. <laughs> yeah, there's an... And I don't know that it's necessarily that people are stupid. But they definitely are not using their brains for anything other than filler. Or there's quite a few of them out there that are using them just for filler. To make sure that the whole head apparatus does not collapse in a strong breeze. Hmm. Okay, let me... Yes? Hi, Java! I'm waving at you too, honey, but I don't have video going, so... <laughs> That's another thing that it's a good thing. <laughs> uh, let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. See, I told you, I'm, I'm trying to not get it. But I'm doing my oils. I'm doing my oils. I'm being good. Oh, hi, Darwin! Hi, bubs. I see you, sweeties. Okay. Let's see. Where should I get to first? Um, I know everybody's probably expecting me to say something about Oregon, and I really don't know what the hell, what the hell is going on. Oh, Mortal Wombat. Hi, Mortal Wombat. Why in the hell were you yelling when you came in? <laughs> uh, what? Anti-Muslim Oregon militant Ritzheimer. Hmm. You know, there's an awful lot of unhinged people out there. And that's, that's a whole thing that I'm sure that there's, um, yep. Damn background new... In any case, um, I'm sure there's a shitload of people that, you know, are very well intended and, um, and um, you know, 
bless their hearts. You know, they're they're trying to do the right thing, and I get that. I get that, and I love them. Hi, Juana. How you doing? <laughs> You're late. You're late for a very important date. Oh, really? We have a date, Juana? I didn't know that. Shit. You'll have to pardon my key cat. She's up here giving me hugs right now. <laughs> um, in any case, yes, Lino. Yes, darling. Um, okay. When Tyrone said uh, insulted the peoples. Uh, who's going to say shit to me? Go ahead and say shit to me. I don't care. I'll sling it right back at you. Yes. What, 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 what? What was that? Okay. It's an article for you to read. Oh. But what, what if somebody doesn't want to do that? I mean, you know, I don't want to do that because I have standards. And quite frankly, I want to be able to walk. If I were to try and, and fuck all of them, damn, I wouldn't walk for months. But um, boom, boom. Okay, let's see. Yeah, see, and this this is what pisses me off. You know, the, there's people out there, you know, it's just like, I know, Grimmy, you don't like cops at all. I get that. I understand that. And there's quite a few cops that I know that I don't like. But not all of them are ass munches. Um, oh, yeah, you should see me at the zoo. <laughs> yeah, all the critters recognize me. They go, hey, how the fuck did you get out? Um, <clears throat> in any case, uh, you, have, you have all of these wonderful people that are trying to do the right thing. And then you have one fucktard that gets in there and messes everything up. And unfortunately, it's the one fucktard that gets the airplay. And they're the ones that makes everybody else look bad. So I get very concerned when I start seeing some of this stuff. Because really, you know, you need to be careful, peeps. You need to be careful. I understand you want to, you know, and I get it. I really do get it. There's an awful lot of bullshit going on. But number one, I really and honestly and truly do not believe that you can solve a problem with the same thought process that caused it in the first place. And the thought process that caused an awful lot of the problems that we have right now are the greed process and the force process. You cannot use force against force. I mean, you just, I, and I know that that sounds, it, it sounds like it doesn't make sense, but seriously. Um, this shit is just, I don't know what to do to fix it. I just know that, wow, you cannot go in there thinking that you can go all high noon and guns ablaze and all this other fun shit and expect to do, have anything good come of it. You really can't. Cause number one, they have more toys than you do and they are going to write the narrative. So you need to keep that in mind whenever you try and do something. Uh, yes. Okay. They're having a town hall right now. Okay. You know, I get that. Yes, I do, Mortal Wombat. I really do. <laughs> and yes, 99% of lawyers do make the other 1% look bad. But I do happen to know of 1% that, um, yeah, yeah, because I have a co-worker that's going through some, some rough stuff right now, and damn it all, it's really, really hard. Um, <clears throat> yeah. How about joke them if they can't take a fuck? How's that sound? I saw that, Vince. Uh, in any case, okay, let's go over here to this link that Grimmy put on here. This is from SputnikNews.com. Unhinged anti-Muslim Oregon militant Ritzheimer tracked by FBI for months, which... As if that's a badge of honor anymore? Seriously? How many of us have made a list? I'm sure I have. I'm sure I've been on a list for a while now. For quite a while. 
several years. In any case, uh, among the dozen or so armed militiamen who have seized, I love the way they put this, seized the Mahler uh, National Wildlife Refuge in Oregon is John Ritzheimer, an anti-Muslim extremist who has been tracked by the FBI for months. Woo. The tattooed Marine from Arizona rose to infamy last May after organizing an armed anti-Muslim protest at a Phoenix mosque. He frequently posted emotional and hateful videos to social media and begs for other extremists to send him donations. Well, darling, you get what you give, hun. The likelihood for blood will be high. Oh, hun. see, and this is the kind of bullshit. You know, you got these morons that are getting the limelight. And here I'm giving him some fucking lime. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to. Sorry, Graham. I can't. I can't. I can't do this shit. Because it's like, really? Give a moron 15 minutes of fame. And that's what they live for. It really is. They want to get themselves in the limelight. I know you got to take a stand sometime, hun. I, I, I get that. I yeah, I really do. I just think we need to be very careful where we tread and where we're standing and make sure it's not a landmine that somebody placed there previous to our walking in. Okay? If you get my drift. Tread lightly. Um. <laughs> oh, sweetheart. <clears throat> I am going to laugh in the face of whatever the hell because it sure as hell beats crying. Done my share of that too. And I, I don't look nearly as hideous when I'm laughing. <laughs> of course, I don't know anybody that looks good when they're crying. Do you? I mean, I think we all just look absolutely wretched because that's the way we feel. And therefore, it's projected on the outside. But yeah, I'm going to keep laughing, hun. You know I will. Uh, just because I ain't got right good sense, I don't know any better, apparently. And that's okay. I don't mind being that way. Um, oh, and here's another one. And I'm just going to get this shit out of the way. It's a freaking wackadoodle Wednesday, so God damn it. Uh, the Free Thought Project dot com says that special ops have been called into Oregon as fake militiamen. And they, expo they are exposed as fed provocateurs by real militia, which I don't doubt that one goddamn bit. I mean, how in the hell do you think false flags happen? They have, they have plants. That's what they do. And what's really, really sad is that they could probably not even have a plant. But the more that this shit goes on the more people are going to start looking at each other and going, are you a plant? They may not be saying it out loud, but they'll be thinking it. And so that trust is gone. You know, so people, we need to really start building, you know, our trust with each other. And, and wow. Yeah. And I, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. I don't, I, I don't know a fix. It's one of those things where it's like I hear and see so much shit and I'm getting so damn jaded by all of this that I just, yeah. And everybody wants their 15 minutes of fame or 15 seconds of fame, however you want to look at it. Me, I'm just on here because y'all need some freaking somebody to laugh at, Okay. And I'm not one bit ashamed to go out there and look absolutely stupid so that y'all have something to laugh at. So, you know, that's, that's just, I think that's my role in life. I'm, I'm, I'm the, uh, resident Riri. So, you know, if you, if you want to go, whew, I'm not quite as whacked as that woman is. Well, there you go. You can use me for that. That's fine. I will be a shining example of just how whacked you can be. <laughs> and it is a wackadoodle Wednesday, so what the hell? Right? Right. So, okay. Um, this is one that Costin posted earlier today. I'm going to try and get all this serious stuff out of the way right off the bat. 
because I'm going to have to have some whack because seriously, my week has not exactly been wunderbar. And I'm still laughing at it, <laughs> if for nothing else, to get myself to realize that I am in control of my happiness and I don't have to let the shit get me down. Whew. I'm, I keep telling myself that and eventually I'll believe it. Okay, all aboard the crazy train. This is by Costin, our lovely Costin over on worldtruth.org. And World Politics and Business News is his page. So, Obama's war on America, the American people, and the U.S. Constitution. You know, you have to actually be armed in order to start out with a war. And quite frankly, if his weapon is brains, <laughs> he's going into battle unarmed. Unless you consider the little earbuds and his lovely little teleprompter friend his brains, and then, yeah, okay, he's armed by evil deviants. <sighs> okay. Well, maybe the and Costin has a picture up above of Dangleberry doing a selfie and then the total destruction and annihilation of everything we know and love behind him, which, you know, if that's your reality, hon, not mine. Oh, well, this is dated yesterday. So, today... Dangleberry, I, he says Mr. Obama, but I prefer Dangleberry, is firing the first major shot over the bow to rein in the rights of the American people to keep and bear arms. You know, I would bear my arms, but it's cold outside, and so no, they are covered. The shot to be heard around the world and pushing draconian laws via fiat in the form of EIEIOs, which cannot make law. They were not designed to make law. They were designed to stipulate how existing law was to be carried out, people. Oh, and people of the great country, the United States of America, are about to get screwed. And trust me, there will not be any kisses involved. And there will not be any lubrication because that's a petroleum product. Although petroleum products are getting, well, they're not really getting cheaper except for gas. But hey... What, Lino? Oh, you're joining Trump's electoral campaign. Well, yippee. Hmm. Okay, Lino. Where's I at? Okay. Back to Costin Singh. Okay, this is a national registration program for firearms confiscation. Dangleberry is no different than Hitler, Stalin, or Pol Pot. As far as I'm concerned, Dangleberry, Shrillery, DOJ Attorney Lynch, and his brood of vipers should be arrested for treason. Yes, they should be, darling. But what should be and what is are quite often two completely different things. These new measures... Um, were argued for and against in the Weimar Republic in the 1930s. And um, let's see, did this to his people by creating gun registration or a gun registry. The original gun control laws were written by Werner Best, a future Gestapo official. Well, I'm so happy for him. See, we have all of this lovely history to look back on and learn from. And are we learning from it? Hmm. In 1933, Hitler took this to the new level of evil by telling those who had guns to either turn them in or face confiscation and death. Hitler took the gun rights away from the Social Democrats because they would not follow his lead. The Gestapo banned gun clubs and arrested their leaders and were eventually killed. In order for Hitler to further his gun control fury... Hitler needed to ins uh, needed an incident to occur, and this was called the Night of Broken Glass. The idea was to have someone shoot at the Germ at a German diplomat in Paris, so Hitler could have an excuse to go into the communities and confiscate guns from the citizen citizenry. So you know the rest of the story. I think we do, or at least. The version that's in the history books. 
and a little bit more that didn't make the cut for the history books. Dangleberry, George Soros, and Shirley are all involved in this Hitlerian agenda as well as the lamestream media. Dangleberry is no more than a Hitler in blackface. Oh, Costin, you said that first. <laughs> Mr. Dangleberry made a speech on Tuesday regarding his so-called initiatives on his gun policy, which I'm happy for you, sweetheart, but what part of the Second Amendment where it says shall not be infringed do you not understand, Mr. Supposed Constitutional Attorney, you? Yeah, this is nothing more than a gun registration system to be used to sooner or later confiscate legal firearms from law-abiding citizens. There is, or here in this statement, the commander and thief lumped San Bernardino, Fort Hood, and the Navy Yard in with the supposed mass shootings, which Fort Hood and the Navy Yard weren't those workplace violence issues. Isn't that what they were classified as? Five years ago this week, a sitting member of Congress and 18 others were shot at at a supermarket in Tucson, Arizona. It wasn't the first time I had to talk to the nation in response to a mass shooting, nor would it be the last. Fort Hood, um, Binghamton, Aurora, Oak Creek, Newtown, Navy Yard, San Bernardino, Charleston, San Bernardino, or excuse me, Santa Barbara, San Bernardino. <coughs> excuse me. It's a known fact that the Navy Yard, Fort Hood, and San Bernardino incidents were both acts of terrorism, and Mr. Dangleberry refuses to acknowledge that, although I don't believe San Bernardino was an act of terrorism. I think that was another false flag. My personal opinion. What he is doing is making the American people who believe in the Constitution and the Second Amendment equal to those who are terrorists and criminalizing gun ownership, which seriously... Hi, Costin! How you doing, sweetheart? Um, you know, the fastest way to make someone a criminal is to write a law. It's really that simple. All you have to do to make someone a criminal or to make a bunch of people criminals is to write a law. And terrorists, you know, the definition of a terrorist is someone who strikes fear into another, usually with the force of violence, and um, causes them to change either their behavior or they do it in, in order to um, gain politically. Well, you know what? Um, I guess if we strike fear in the hearts of those that are pulling strings of the ass munches that are in D.C. right now, golly, I feel bad that you guys are scared. I really do. Honest and for true. Not. Okay. I'm going to go to hell for lying. I'm going to go to hell for a lot of other things, but lying, yeah, just got added to the list. Okay, apparently that's the same tactic that Hitler, Stalin, and every other dictator has ever used to take power from the people and centralize that power to the state. Oh, that power has been centralized uh, for quite some time, and people just flat-ass don't realize it technically. If you want to look at technicalities, um, home rule is supposed to be the supreme law of the land. What, Grammy? Oh, the new law is that everything you do is illegal. Okay. Well, if everything I do is illegal, huh. You know, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, people say that, that um, representatives and all that other fun stuff live above the law. And I look at that a little bass backwards. Um, I don't, I don't look at them as claiming that they are above the law because the way I look at it and yeah, okay, it, this is my opinion. Maybe some of you will, be, you know, believe something quite similar to it. Just don't realize that it's similar until I finally spit it out. <laughs> but, um, I think laws 
you know, if you're going to have a law or a rule that is intended to let people know in a society, in a group, in a community, your behavior can only go so far, can only go so low before it violates um, either uh, other people's property or rights or what have you. But once, once you get to that certain level and do not go any lower, see, I think those that break laws go below. I think the rest of us that are good, honest, decent people that don't want to screw anybody over, that don't fuck anybody over, that don't use force against anyone, that are not always initiating bullshit or taking what is not ours. Those of us that live like that, we live above the law because that law is the bottom bar- bottom barrier of what is socially acceptable, if you will. There you go, Meister Brow, the threshold. Um, but um, those that break the law actually go below that barrier or that threshold. They break through that threshold and go down into the scum zone. So, you know, I think people that are not lawbreakers, people that are good, honest, decent people, they are the ones that live above the law and the lawbreakers are the ones that are below it. So, you know, the rest of us, so this whole thing of they think that they're above the law, well, you know, it comforts them. If it comforts them to think that they're above the law, even when they're breaking the law and they're stepping down into the scum zone, then, you know, if it comforts them to think that way, but the rest of us that are up above that law that have not broken that threshold and gone down into the scum zone, you know, we know better. We know better. So, all right, Meister, I'll let you smack them in the mouth. That'll be your job. So, in any case, to get back to what Costin has written here, um, where was I at? Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, the Second Amendment reads as follows, which I, I know the Second Amendment, but I'll read this anyway. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Shall not. Doesn't say cannot, says shall not. Shall not. You shall not do that. And what part of this does Dangleberry and his criminal cohorts, his um, scum suckers, those that live in the nether regions of society? Yeah, those of you down there in the nether regions, you're, you're down there in the sewage pit. What do they think? Yeah. Oh, Loretta Lynch. Yeah. What a rather appropriate name. I think uh, Kaz said that. He thought that was rather appropriate. Although I don't think that's the exact terminology that he used, but yeah. Ah, dear Miss Lynch, Mm -hmm. you do kind of sort of look like Al Sharpton in drag, just saying. Oh, it's not that they don't understand it. It's that they don't give a rat's ass about the right of the people. No, they don't because they think that they are above the law. And well, you know what? It may comfort them to think that way, but the rest of us know better. Dangleberry and all of Congress and the Senate are kneeling before their globalist United Nations master master pant zippers. Ooh, oh, that's just such a gross image, Costin. Thank you ever so much. Did I not tell you I have a rather vivid imagination and now I'm, oh, Soros. Okay, I'm really glad I haven't had supper yet. Whew, because I wouldn't have it for long. Ugh, yeah. Gun registration comes sooner or later. Gun confiscation. Yep. And then Paul Harvey. Oh, a Paul Harvey thing. Well, thank you, darling. From September of 2000. Are you considering backing gun control laws? 
Do you think that because you may not own a gun, the rights guaranteed by the Second Amendment don't matter? Well, consider this. In 1929, the Soviet Union established gun control. From 1929 to 1953, approximately 20 million dissidents, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and exterminated. I forgot to shut off my speakers. Oopsie, just a sec. Okay. In 1911, Turkey established gun control. From 1915 to 1917, 1.5 million Armenians, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and exterminated. Yeah, kind of like the Orkin Man, only it's the Obama land Man. Yeah. Germany established gun control in 1938, and from 1939 to 1945, 13 million Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, and the mentally ill and others were, uh, who were unable to defend themselves were rounded up and exterminated. China established gun control in 1935. From 1948 to 1952, 20 million political dissidents unable to defend themselves were rounded up and exterminated. My note, they were unable to repel Japanese invaders who piled them up like cordwood. Oh, your dad had pictures? Oh, yucky. Uh. Guatemala established gun control in 1964, and from 1964 to 1981, 100,000 Mayan Indians unable to defend themselves were rounded up and exterminated. Uganda established gun control in 1970. From 1971 to 1979, 300,000 Christians unable to defend themselves were rounded up and exterminated. Cambodia established gun control in 1956. From 1975 to 1977, 1 million educated people unable to defend themselves were rounded up and exterminated. That places total victims who lost their lives because of gun control at approximately 56 million in the last century. Since we should learn from the mistakes of history, the next time someone talks in favor of gun control, find out which group of citizens they wish to have exterminated. I'm all for gun control. I use both hands to control my weapon. Just saying. Just a sec. I got to see. Lino? Yes, darling. What are you saying? Um, ah. Why, thank you very much, Lino. Lino just confirmed the thing about the um, Hitler and gun control thing. Okay. If this goes on to say it has now been 12 months since gun owners in Australia were forced to surrender 640,381 personal firearms to be destroyed. The program costing the government more than $500 million. The results Australia wide homicides are up 3.2%, assaults are up 8%, and armed robberies are up 44%. In that country's state of Victoria, Homicides with firearms are up 300%. Over the p previous 25 years, figures were showing a steady decrease in armed robberies, and Australian politicians are on the spot and at a loss to explain how no improvement in safety has been observed after such a monumental effort and expense has been or was expended in ridding society of guns. It's time to state it plainly. Guns in the hands of honest citizens save lives and property. And yes, gun control laws only affect the law-abiding citizens. And when you stop and think about it, when there is a gun control law and you refuse to comply, you instantly become a criminal. So technically, if you keep your firearm after a gun, gun registration and you don't register it or a gun confiscation and you do not turn it in if you keep it you are automatically a criminal 
just because you did not blindly go along. So, not a pleasant thought. Thank you ever so much, Costin, for this. Yeah. What? <laughs> Costin's making, I'll take a cup of coffee, hun. Um. <laughs> oh, let's see what oh executive order is just another e-i-e-i-o it does not make a shitting bit of difference it is not a fucking law an executive order is not a law. And I had that same discussion with my state representative. And you know what his response was? Well, they've been doing it for years. And you know what my response to him was? You know what? You can be doing something wrong for years. That doesn't make it right just because you've been doing it for years. It just means you're really fucking stupid because you continue to do something wrong. Year after year after year. And it means the rest of us are gullible ding fods that allow them to get away with it. Why? Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Why don't we just tell them, no, no. Said you're going to suck my what? <laughs> yeah, I went there. <laughs> nah, I'm not going <clears> to. <throat> Excuse me. Oh, hi there, Rim Sleep. How are you doing, darling? Da 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 da. Oop. <laughs> okay. I'm done checking those. Uh, ho. Oh. Dang, I got notifications over here on World Truth. Anybody, if you wish to read that article from Costin, he posted it on my wall. Was that today or yesterday, Costin? I don't, I don't remember. I don't rem. Okay, I didn't have breakfast this morning. That's right, or not, not early morning breakfast. I did after I got to work because I was running like a crazy person this morning. Um, as if this morning is any different from any other morning for this crazy old lady. Okay, uh, let me look in my pocket. Da, 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 da. Okay, yes, we need to go here. We need to go here. This is, what, I don't remember who shared this on my wall, but thank you, whoever you were. I truly appreciate it. Um, this is from loweringthebar.net. Yeah, you guessed it. Somebody really lowered the bar. Stormtrooper arrested. <coughs> Excuse me. The way things are today, you just can't have that, said Lieutenant Rick Donnelly of the police squad in Lynn, Massachusetts. I thought he was talking about common sense, but it turns out that <laughs> what you can't have is an Imperial Stormtrooper costume. Uh huh. At least you can't have one that comes with a blaster, and I assume they all do. Really? Oh, because that blaster looks entirely too much like an assault weapon. You know, my grandchildren have Nerf guns that look like assault weapons, too, only they're pretty colors. Ay. Oh, well, you can't do this within, while you're within 1,000 feet of a school in Lynn, Massachusetts, which there's lots of places that you can't have things within 1,000 feet of a school. But when you live in a small community like I do, you know, we have a couple of individuals that are on the, uh, what is that, sexual predator registry, whatever, whatever thing it is, um, one of them is because when he was 17 and his girlfriend was 15, he got his girlfriend pregnant and her parents didn't like that. So they pressed charges against him. And seeing as how 15 was not 
age of consent and seeing as how he was 17, which is over the age of consent in the state of Kansas, he got nailed as a sexual predator. And so he gets to wear that lovely little badge for the rest of his life. Some of our rules are really fucked up, you know? Um, but yeah, one of the other ones is no, it wasn't quite so nice. And that son of a bitch lived within a thousand feet of a school. And yeah, uh, seeing as how it's a small community, it's rather difficult to make him move when, yeah. Some of those rules, hmm. You know, when you make rules like that, no matter how well-intended they are, they have a tendency to really screw shit up. Which is why I just plain don't like rules. Ha-ha. Oh, well. In any case, <clears throat> because, of course, what happens next is that out of an abundance of caution, someone will call the police and report, A man with a gun! Even if what you're actually looking at is just a dork with a fake blaster. Because, you know, he's a Star Wars geek. And it doesn't even shirt, shoot Nerf pellets. It's just a prop. Of course, members of the Can't Be Too Careful Club will argue that if you see someone near a school who's carrying a weapon, it's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, you never know. He might be carrying an actual 21st century gun and planning to attack the school with it. It could be. You never know. Somebody could have printed a 3D weapon. Mm -hmm. Although, based on the other cases I've read about, people who did that kind of thing generally don't do it in costume. But there's always that first time let alone a costume made of shiny white plastic that can be seen from a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, there's nothing like drawing your attention, drawing attention to you for uh, trying to go incognito. Just because the Empire, or the First Order, is dumb enough to have its soldiers wear stuff that is both ineffective and easily seen doesn't mean real-life thugs are likely to do that. No. Although real-life thugs go around with their pants around their ankles because, well, that's cool to have your boxers hanging out. <laughs> no, the only thing that's cool is the ventilation going on your nether regions. That's the only thing that's cool, darling. Okay, uh, maybe more to the point, the caller admitted that she thought the gun might be plastic. Most likely because she was looking at a guy in an Imperial Stormtrooper costume. But because she wasn't sure, well, you can't be too careful. So, would I make that call if I were the principal of an elementary school? Maybe I would. But there are at least two reasons I might not, which to me, this whole thing could be solved if you have teachers that are trained in the use of weaponry. And, you know, it's like on a rotational thing. You know, every week, two different teachers are packing. If you don't have gun-free zones in schools, they're not quite as easy a target to get to, you know. I know, kind of weird thinking, but there you have it. So, first, risk is relative. And personally, I think the risk that a guy in a stormtrooper costume is likely to be a real threat is pretty low for the reasons I mentioned above. And while you're focused on the Star Wars guy, maybe you don't see the actual creep lurking near the playground. Or maybe you just miss that kid running out in the street. Trying to guard against every risk, no matter how small, is counterproductive. Kind of like not letting children play tag or touch football because someone might get hurt. Oh, let's take away the swing sets on the merry-go-rounds and the jungle gyms too while you're at it because someone might fall down and get a boo-boo. The other reason is that police have real guns with real bullets that kill real people. <laughs> Quite frequently, actually. Including people with fake guns. For example, Tamir Rice, the 12-year-old who two cops shot dead after jumping out with guns drawn, even though they had been told his gun was probably fake. 
This guy, thankfully, did not get shot. Hey, maybe it is good to look white from a distance. I don't know. Was that a racist remark? But he easily could have. And it's not like that armor is going to stop anything. Also, police don't always hit what they're aiming at, which is another risk to take into account before you make a panicky call summoning someone with guns to an elementary school. But okay, so you make the call. Fine. And the police show up and don't kill anybody. Great. And determine that the guy poses no threat. Super de duper de Peter T. Hooper. And then they arrest him. Huh? Yeah. Police arrested the stormtrooper and charged him with disturbing a school, which I did not know that was a crime. But apparently, with all those pages of legislation and rules, I don't think anybody knows what is a crime and what isn't anymore, probably including breathing. So, and loitering within 1,000 feet of a school. Ooh, loitering. Ooh, he's such a violent individual. Although, if he was hanging around or doing something affirmatively or yeah, affirmatively disturbing, affirmatively disturbing. Wow, that's an interesting phrase. The report doesn't say anything about it. Why not just check him out and tell him to move along, which is what they used to do in the old days. Our feelings are that he was not there to cause harm to the kids, Donnelly said. And since he was only carrying a fake blaster, I'd say those feelings were ba valid. But he used bad judgment, and maybe that should be a crime in and of itself. But it isn't. Okay, it's a crime against humanity to have bad judgment. And usually, okay, not usually, but odds are someone that is perpetually how, uh, committing um a crime of uh, bad judgment. A lot of times, somewhere along their route, the phrase, hold my beer, watch this, is going to come up. And then, once that phrase comes up, they are probably participating in an endeavor that is going to put them on the Darwin Award list. So, I think it's kind of a self-cleansing thing, don't you know? You know, you exercise enough bad judgment and eventually you're going to bad judgment yourself into a Darwin Award. Just saying. Uh, uh, oh, the chair. Give them the chair. No, they can't have my chair. They can't have my chair. Damn it. What? What the heck? Fuckwads? Who's a fuckwad? Let me see. What? Oh. Oh, MDA. Okay. PETA food? Yeah, I heard PETA stands for people eating tasty animals. But. Uh. What? Yes, they should be on the watch list costume, but you know what, sweetheart? I don't, I, if I ever do anything bad enough to make it to where I have to watch them, just shoot me. Because that's just not cool. That, to me, would be a fate worse than death. Um, uh, Okay. Yep. Okay. I finally caught up. Happily blessed as a po' boy. That's a sandwich, isn't it? <laughs> I got a Powerball ticket, but I doubt very seriously if it was a winner. I actually really did buy a Powerball ticket, too. But did it go out Saturday? Should I go check my ticket? <laughs> <laughs> people exploring tape down that's gross hi beth z how you doing sweetie i know you probably can't hear me yet because you've just joined but hi caca caca i hear you meister 
Did I share that? <laughs> God bless it. Yeah, I did. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> okay, let me put this back over here on World Truth. And then I will find something else equally retarded. Oh, I said retarded. Oh, I'm such a heartless turd. Because I am besmirching people with mental handicaps. No, I'm talking about myself, okay? And if they feel besmirched because they have been lumped in with me, well, sorry. Not. Oh, somebody just shared a picture of Dangleberry with the word idiot across the bottom. And you know, I actually cannot disagree with that. I'm Grammy Mary and I approve that meme. <laughs> it's over on Twitter, by the way. Let me look, see who it was that shared it. The last great stand. Go on. Go on. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Dang, I've been at this for an hour. And I just really, I'm, I'm, I'm just absolutely amazed at myself that I got all the way to three minutes before I dropped my first F-bomb. And speaking of bombs... Alabama not to be outdone by Florida. Alabama wants to step into the race. Yes, they do. Apparently, their bomb squad opened a suspicious bag that was full of hot dogs. Them their Wiener schnitzels. This was in Florence, Alabama. The police responded to reports of suspicious bags that were later found to be full of hot dogs. Apparently, the Florence Police Department responded to a call from a local police office reporting a suspicious package at 7 a.m. on Wednesday morning and proceeded to examine the bags using x-ray technology. Since it looked like a bunch of dildos, they thought, oh no, that can't be. Must have the bomb squad show up. Okay, I just threw that shit in there. <laughs> After inspection, the area was shut down as bomb technicians used a robot to remove the bags from the area because they were hot dogs. Well, okay, the only way those will kill you is if you eat them. One of the bags ripped open during transport, revealing a hot dog wrapped in aluminum foil. <gasps> what the hell? Police say they still don't know who left the bags filled with hot dogs at the post office. Obviously, it was a terroristic threat. They were trying to get them to eat those hot dogs and die a slow and painful hot doggy death. Those vile and evil creatures that they are. You know, hot dogs are made from chicken lips, don't you? They are. <laughs> yes, cowboy? Oh, Wednesday is 400 million or such? Oh, well, damn. I'm, mm. God, do I have a spare two bucks? Mm, I think, so obviously I didn't win it on Saturday. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> I'm just going to have to spend another $2 and donate to somebody else's fund. Although people do not realize that most of that money goes to yeah but you know what if I were to win if I seriously I'm going to put this out there just so y'all know this that my testimony if I were to win Powerball seriously I would take the cash out because pff, why take the annuity because I know so many people that once they get that kind of shit oh Wednesday is now fuck I didn't buy a ticket I am so screwed okay <laughs> Oh, well, I'm not running into town either. No, I'm not driving in town either. Um, okay, so I don't go out today because I want to buy a ticket for Saturday. Actually, I don't want to win a prize that much because, you know, you win that big. Um, if you win, a, if you win that kind of money, everybody and their dog, number one is your relative or they're going to do something to one of your relatives in order to get a cut of that money. But if I were to win something like that, I would have like a lotto kind of thing. Only I would be like a secret Santa. Only I would be a secret Grammy. That's not so secret. <laughs> 
Um, but I really would. I would give away like $10,000 a month. Okay, I'll play it on Saturday, Grim. I will do that. Um, I just always figured, you know, if you take out the cash... Squirrel! <laughs> you know, if you take out the cash money, I mean, they're going to take their taxes anyway, which is fine. Take it. I don't care because I spent two bucks and, wow, what a return on my investment. But um, <clears throat> I would just, you know, like people that I know on the internet that I think are way cool, I would just contact them and say, send me your address. You're getting a money order. You know, shit like that. Or I would find a charity, that, you know, somebody like uh, the the uh, Humane Society in the town about 45 miles south of me that doesn't absolutely, they're, they're a no-kill, they're not a humane society, but they're a no-kill um, animal shelter. And I would take, um, I would give them, you know, like $10,000. Just poof, just give it to them. You know, shit like that. Because there's no freaking way in my lifetime that I would be able to spend all of that. No way. Oh, and I would set up, I'd set up a trust for all three of my grandkids. You know, so that they would have, but they wouldn't be able to. Um, I could give you some money. I would give you some money. And some Mahoney. And some Manahay. <laughs> Manahai. <laughs> Whatever the hell. Um. I would give you some money, Mortal Wombat, because I know who you are. Um, but I would. I would just. I would just start giving it away, because you can't. I mean, you can't eat it. And you know, once okay, I I pay for my house, which is the only thing that I would have to actually pay for, and then I would pay for new windows, and heating and air conditioning. <laughs> That would pretty much take care of me. So, you know, so long as I have enough to buy food, I'm a happy camper. And so start giving it away. That's what I would do if I were to win Powerball. Just because I ain't got right good sense. And I don't need it. I'm, I don't need all that. I don't know of anybody that needs all that. Seriously. Um... Mm -hmm. Speaking of the lottery, did I share this? Wow, squirrel. <laughs> I am having a total brain farts are us kind of day. Have you noticed? <laughs> I have. Whee. Okay. Let me share their Wiener schnitzel bombs. They're gut bombs. Does that count? Or they can be used to make gut bombs. Hmm. Uh, crap, and I close. Okay. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. There you go. I watched The Matrix the other night. Why? I don't know, but I did. And it was like, oh. Yeah, it's just like I remembered it being. <laughs> that's that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, uh, here's a link off to the site over here on Oopy. Oopy! Oopy, oopy, oopy. Five times things went wrong with the lottery. Oh, no, say it isn't so. I'm shocked. Yeah, sometimes winning the lottery isn't all it's cracked up to be. I do remember hearing about a young man um, in Iowa reading about him just a couple weeks ago that darn it all he was only 20 instead of being 21 and uh yeah he got totally hosed on that hundred thousand dollars which he actually only got seventy thousand but he had to give it back because and now he's actually got charges filed against him too mm, what a bunch of shit in any case <clears throat> winning the lottery doesn't always have a happy ending nope with the first Powerball prize of 2016 going unclaimed Saturday, damn it all, and the new award nearing a record-breaking $400 million, here's a look at five lotto winners who were proof that you can't always take lottery money to the bank. 
Number one, the loser. In March of 2015, the California, California or Mexifornia or California or however you want to put it, that lottery donated a $1 million Powerball jackpot to schools after the winners lost the ticket and one is, was unable to find it by the 180-day deadline. Oh, that would just totally suck. But if you didn't know that you'd lost the ticket, I mean, if it just didn't get turned in, then how do you know? Although I do, okay, let's read the rest of these and see if maybe I, maybe it's not in here. Number two, the leftover. The manager of a California gas station revealed in May that an unidentified man who had won a $75,000 prize was ac accidentally given a $75 award instead. Oh, that would totally suck. Did you track him down? Number three, the overlooker. This is a thief who stole a pair of sunglasses from a car in Seattle last May. I remember reading about this and failed to notice the winning $1 million Powerball ticket that was lying underneath the glasses. Obviously, they thought, oh, shit, it's not a winner because it's just laying there because, you know, I actually went in uh, last Saturday and I'd had tickets from, oh, several months because I, you know, I'll buy one here and then I'll buy one there and then I'll buy and I never check them because <laughs> that's the way I roll. And so Saturday when I went in and I thought, oh, what the hell? I'll buy a Powerball ticket. I didn't even look to see what the prize was. I just thought, what the hell? I was feeling frisky and bought a ticket. And so I thought, I'll check these. And so I had five of them that I was checking. And you know what? I, I had five dollars in winners. So it paid for my Powerball ticket and paid for my Kansas cash and my Mega Million. So, hey, um, I didn't actually spend any money. Circular logic, right? It was on sale. <laughs> Here we go. There's the one that I was just talking about. Number four, the underage. It's a 20-year-old man from Iowa who was denied the $100,000 lottery winnings in December after officials have discovered that he was too young to buy a ticket after attempting to claim his prize. The man faced underage gambling charges. Mm, yippee. And number five, the forgetful. This was a Michigan woman. Um, she became a $1 million lottery winner in September after finding a forgotten winning ticket that sat in a pile of mail for nearly four months. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing because she still got it, right? Um, hmm. There was a gentleman. I read about this a year ago. Um, that um, over in the UK had always gone, he had certain numbers that he played in their lottery over there. Every drawing, he played those numbers. And then there was one occasion where he didn't get a chance to go and get his ticket purchased. And the day after, he found out that the numbers that he always played actually hit and he committed suicide. That's sad. That is really sad. To make yourself room temperature over something like that. Really sad. I think. Because it's just money. Oy. Let's see here. Put this over here. Yep, easy come, easy go. Oh, what was that, Meister? Um. <laughs> Grammy, that would be kind of freakish, wouldn't it? Um. Oh, how funny. You know, you'd be surprised how many people win big jack jackpots like that. And um, within, oh God, I'm trying to think of what the percentage is now. I'd read about it a couple of years ago. But there was um, uh, the number of people that when they win big like that, they wind up filing bankruptcy within five years because they just go out there and get absolutely stupid. Just stupid. 
Um, number one, they do the annuity thing, which is stupid. Um, number two, they go out and they start buying shit like crazy, not realizing that Uncle Sugar's going to want his cut. And what Uncle Sugar wants, Uncle Sugar comes and takes, which is unfortunate and it needs to stop. But when it comes to that kind of shit, yeah. As the gods mock him, so cursed them and died. What? 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 Oh. Oh, Randy Rhodes. Oh, Randy Rhodes suicide solution. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Randy Rhodes, that was kind of a loss. He was a hell of a guitarist. And rather pleasing on the eyes, too. <laughs> Hi, D. Hi, Doc. How are you guys doing? I hope you're having an awesome wackadoodle Wednesday. <laughs> Good one, Rusty. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> you're so funny. Okay, I am going to go back to... Oh, crap, my Twitter just keeps going nuts. I know, I love this picture. Idiot. Yes, yes. Idiot. Where's that word come from? Inquiring minds. I'm going to have to look that up when I get off the radio tonight. Uh, war, pestilence, earthquake, floods, storms, mere amateurs in the presence of central bankers. <laughs> Good one, Northy. That's from Zero Hedge. Hmm. And then there's Pete Santilli. I don't like him. There's something about him that just rubs me the wrong way. And thank God it's not physically. Because, oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm just scrolling on my Twitter. <laughs> I'm scrolling my Twitter. Doesn't that sound disgusting? <laughs> or is it just my mind? Never mind. <laughs> Okay. I go back to my pocket. Let me look at my pocket and then I'll have to um da, da, da. Oh, here we go. I got to do this cuz well, it's Calvin and Hobbes. And Hobbes is alive. Just so as you know. For those of you that think he's just a stuffed tiger, you're wrong. I'm just telling you right now straight up this is from vox.com i saw it the other day i don't remember if it was my sister or my cousin that shared it and i saw it and i had to grab it because it was like oh yeah oh yeah because i am like a calvin and hobbsaholic and a bloom county yeah i like my opus and bill Hack! hairball Calvin and Hobbes ended 20 years ago, and here's how it changed everything. It and the, bar and the Far Side both closed shop in 1995, but their legacies live on. From a certain perspective, 1995 was the year newspaper comic strips died. Of course, that isn't true in a literal sense. If you go and you pick up a newspaper right now, it will probably have a comics page. One that features some intriguing new voices right alongside stalwarts like Garfield and Blondie. And the internet has, in theory, provided the best platform for comic strips ever. Even before you consider comics produced exclusively for the web. Hundreds of comic strips and their complete archives are available online on sites like GoComics.com. Yet... It often feels like newspapers, comics, best days are behind them. Who else used to read Dick Tracy? And Beetle Bailey and Hagar and, um, oh, Lockhorns and, oh, Crime and Andy Cap. Those are the ones I liked reading. Um, the slow, protracted agonies of print media have a lot to do with 
uh, the comics being not so up to par, I should say. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, where was that at? Okay, have a lot to do with that. As do the wide variety of web comics being published these days, which it should be said are much poorer at providing the average comics artist with a living wage than the newspaper syndicate system is. But that feeling also stems from the belief that comic strips are trapped forever in the past where the best, longest lasting comic strips are the ones that launched in the 20s or 30s. Strips like Hagar the Horrible, yeah, which debuted in 1973 are relatively new kids on the block, which I love Hagar too. I have a lot of the little comic <coughs> excuse me, the books, which when the grandkids come out, they just, there's a shelf that's just full of them. And they go through, they'll sit there and read like five or six of those books. If it's crappy weather outside, which I'd much rather that than watching moronic TV, which now they can't do that because I don't have moronic TV except for Netflix and DVDs. But and VHS, yes, I do still have VHS because I'm old school with that shit. Okay, so the newspaper comic strip died in 1995 because that was when the last two strips that became legitimate pop culture sensations ended their runs with their respective final strips book ending the year. Their creators followed very different paths to success and the strips couldn't have been more different in both form and content, but they both rocketed to mass success that hasn't been replicated since. The strips were The Far Side and Calvin and Hobbes, and the comics fans still miss them, which I, yeah, Far Side, oh yeah. Had it all down the stairway wall in my house. We took a calendar of the, you know, the 365 day calendar thingies and glued them, the Far Side comics on the wall. It's really cool. People would come over and just sit on the steps and just read the comics going down the steps. Um, of the two, The Far Side was the stranger beast. <laughs> yeah. When it began in, the, in 1980, its single panel format hadn't been in vogue in the comic pages since at least the 60s, if not longer. And at the end, the longest running comics of that type were gently or gentle family humor panels like Dennis the Menace and the Family Circus. Although, okay, it, Dennis the Menace is the multi-panel on Sundays, I guess. Which, so is Family Circus. Both might have featured a single gag every day, but they also had recurring characters. Farside didn't even have familiar faces to fall back on. What it did have, <coughs> excuse me, was a unique blend of sheer weirdness, scientific curiosity, and dark humor. And one of them, one of my favorites is still the, uh, the fish bowl. And the two little fishies are swimming out of their castle thingy. And the mama fishy is over here on the other side of the fish bowl. And one of the little fishies is swimming up to mommy. And it goes, mom, Theron dried the bed. I just love that one. I just saw that one. <laughs> okay, there's lots of them that were awesome, though. Creator Gary Larson hadn't wanted to be a cartoonist all his life or anything like that. He simply seized upon drawing jokes as a way to get out of the music store job he hated. By most accounts, his true passion was jazz guitar. The Far Side was intended to be a better way to make a living not the marketing behemoth it became. Larson's comics slowly spread from paper to paper. After publishing locally in his hometown of Seattle, Larson landed a syndication deal via the San Francisco Chronicle, and the strip blew up. Oh my God, he's a comic strip terrorist because it blew up. A typical Farside comic shifted the perspective through which readers might view a common situation. Think, for instance, of the famous strip where a female chimpanzee finds a blonde hair on her male chimpanzee's shoulder 
and asks if he's been spending more time with that good old tramp. <laughs> it was a familiar situation, the wife accusing the husband of cheating on her, but filtered through the perspective of animals. Then, in another twist, you have you have to know a little something extra, namely who Jane Goodall is, to experience the full effect of the joke. The Far Side was a comic strip for smarty pants kids and adults they grew up to be. If a comic strip's popularity were measured in terms of how many high school and college teachers have ever taped an individual strip to their office door, the far side would be number one of all time. It marked contrast to Calvin and Hobbes creators Bill Watterson, who was famously against the idea. Larson didn't seem to mind very much if his strip was licensed for assorted products. The far side page a day calendar was so popular that when it was discontinued in 2002, seven years after the strip concluded, it was still the number one seller by far. Larson reissued it for a one-off 2007 edition and its sales meant to benefit Conservation International, a charity protecting endangered animals. His passion for the environment was one of the few themes unifying many far side comics. He also produced greeting cards, which were discontinued in 2009, t-shirts, and even a TV special, which I never saw the TV special. Larson really only seems gregarious because Watterson was, for so long, so reclusive. But the thing the two men have most in common is their reluctance to talk to press, or really anyone, about their success. When interviewed in connection with the 2007 calendar by USA Today, Larson refused to sit for or provide a current photo, which would have revealed what he looked like, and he stopped production of the strip simply because it was time. He feared becoming a hack exactly 15 years after it began, the far side ended, quietly with a Wizard of Oz gag on January 1st, 1995. As for Calvin and Hobbes, as for popular as Farside was, and for as much sorrow as its passing elicited, it was topped by the end of Calvin and Hobbes 364 days later on December 31st, 1995. If the far side felt most sui generi, is that how you say that? Calvin and Hobbes felt as if it was simultaneously its own thing and engaged with decades of comics history as Peanuts had defined the 60s and Doonesbury the 70s and 80s. Calvin and Hobbes seemed to dominate the late 80s and early 90s. And then, after a couple of lengthy hiatuses, creator Watterson called it quits. To retire to a life of watercolor painting and avoiding interviews. Can't say as I blame him. Childhood and its messy similarity to adulthood has always been one of the great themes of the comics pages, and Calvin and Hobbes took a page from Peanuts itself, spinning tales of a world where a little boy in the title seemed to be at once adult and child. Watterson could use him to muse philosophically on the nature of the universe, but he could also use him to talk about how childhood is often a time of painful alienation or utter boredom. Calvin and Hobbes' masterstroke and what most connected the strip to its comics page forebearers was the way it depicted Calvin's imaginary landscapes. His stuffed tiger, Hobbes, became his best friend. One of the reasons Watterson's restricted licensing for so long was that someone would surely want to produce a stuffed Hobbes, and Watterson would never want to definitively answer the question of Hobbes's reality for his readers, which Hobbes is real. Hobbes is alive. Just putting that out there. 
But Calvin and Hobbes also took readers deep into Calvin's adventures as a sci-fi hero, Spaceman Spiff. Or into soap opera style strips when he pl would play more down-to-earth games of pretend with neighborhood girl Susie Durkins. Or into single comic gags involving, say, Tyrannosaurus in fighter planes and all kinds of silliness like that. The most remarkable thing about reading Calvin and Hobbes today is just how alien it feels to the world of 20 years hence. Calvin watches TV, sure, but he doesn't have the internet or a smartphone. And the differences go far beyond technology. His parents let him wander at length in the big woods behind his house. And most of his adventures were enjoyed with minimal adult involvement. Kind of like my childhood. Some of this is Shirley Watterson's emulating peanuts, which, which eschewed adults altogether, whereas Calvin's parents were two of the strip's most important characters. But just as much as it feels like a kind of childhood that is rapidly dissipating. If the Far Side's greatest success was that its humor contained levels upon levels, then Calvin and Hobbes' greatest triumph was its emotional complexity. Strips could simply be funny, sure, but more often than not, they also captured some element of loneliness or struggle with maturity. The story of Calvin and Hobbes is about how scary the world seems when you're six years old, but also how scary it seems when you're 36 years old. Calvin's longing for something else was just as resonant with the strip's elderly fans as it was with its childhood fans. That's a balance that only Peanuts really matched with the history of massively popular comic strips. It's also likely what led to Watterson's decision to hang things up after just a little over 10 years. The balance of tones would have eventually gone wrong. And it was arguably already going a little wrong as some of the late strips drifted into a sourness that wasn't as successful, which I don't remember seeing that, but... Watterson chose to send Calvin and Hobbes off into a wintry landscape, sledding into those wide-open woods, rather than write a definitive finale. Calvin and Hobbes are, theoretically, still out there, in some midwestern winter, skidding through the snow, but because of the streep's or because of the strip's quality, they recede a little further from our memory with every year, which I don't think so. And actually, I kind of sort of like to think of Calvin and Hobbes getting in that cardboard box, their time machine, and they're kind of zipping through time. That's what I think. The most obvious legacy of both strips ending was that they gave comic strips a new method of bowing out from the funny pages where before a strip would continue with a new artist and writer after the original creator stepped down, it's become much more common for popular ones to simply end when they end. Peanuts went into eternal rerun mode after Charles Schultz died shortly before his final strip was published in 2000. While both For Better or For Worse and Kathy had much more definitive endpoints in 2008 and 2010. The legion of comic strip creators who emulate both works has also been substantial, particularly Calvin and Hobbes, which feels as if it has dozens of imitators and unofficial spin-off strips. Most notably of today's comics pages are Pearls Before Swine, which features some very clever, smart guy humor of Farside, and um, Leo... And let's see, which captures some of the emotional depth of Calvin and Hobbes. And on the web, we have XKCD, which I've never read that one. Both Calvin and Hobbes and The Far Side also live on in their original shelves, thanks to printed collections of the entire runs. The Complete Far Side was both the heaviest and most expensive book to grace the New York Times bestseller list when it was released in 2003, and I happened to purchase that for the X for Christmas. 
but it was unseated in both regards by the complete Calvin and Hobbes, which was released in 2005. It's hard to escape the feeling that when those two ended in 1995, they closed the curtain on one portion of comic strips' development as an art form. There have been some great strips since. Both closed shop, but there haven't been great strips that also became national sensations. The Far Side and Calvin and Hobbes are two of the last beacons of the monoculture when everybody pretty much watched and consumed the same things and had all the same reference points. These days, the world of comic strips is more diverse in both sto storytelling and form. But something's been lost all the same. I know that was kind of long, but it was like, I really like Calvin and Hobbes, and I really like The Far Side, and I really kind of sort of miss both of them. Oh, yeah, the transmographer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, theropods. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, I know. And the stinky girls and all that other fun stuff. Okay, I'm totally spazzing here. Um... The official, it, no, it wasn't the Woman Haters Club because that was the Little Rascals. Okay, Mortal Wombat, what the heck was his club? Damn it. Damn it. I can't think of it now. Up in the treehouse. Um, oh, hey, Vince is a bridge broker. There you go, Vince. You going to sell him a bridge? To where? Terabithia? You know, I'm going to have to go downstairs and grab a couple of my, because I do have some Farside books downstairs, and I have a couple of Calvin Hobbes down there, and I have some Bloom County, and I'm going to have to go down and grab them, and I think that's going to be my bedtime reading for the next few days, because <sighs> I do love those. Yeah, I'm a comic strip kind of gal, and you know, they really did tell some very, very poignant things in them. And they, they made us laugh at some really, really ucky things, too. So, I liked my comic strips. I know, Rascal. Did you like them, too? Oh, you, you weren't born yet. Oh. Okay. Let's see. Ouch, kitty. Ouch. Let's see, what's on Oopy? Oopy, Oopy, Oopy. Let's see. <coughs> nope, don't want to go there. Yes. Yes, dear. Ah, the tree fort. What? Gross! Oh, that's right. Gross. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes, I like the tree fault. Uh, tree fort. Um, Brooklyn Bridge is a special? Cool! <gasps> oh! Yay! Get rid of slimy girls. <laughs> Thank you, Atrax. Ouchie, son of a gun. You got sharp claws, baby girl. The tree fort. The location of the gross meetings. Yes. <coughs> my youngest and my ex got matching tattoos on their forearms of Calvin and Hobbes in their um, time-traveling cardboard box. And, uh, yeah. Buy a ticket, take the ride. I think that's what they have written on there. I'll have to look again. She sent me a picture of her tat. I'll have to look again. Let's see. Um... <laughs> um... 
trying to find ooh Los Angeles trash bins floating in parade formation amid El Nino flooding. Hey, so apparently you guys are actually getting some moisture there. Cool. Uh, Huh. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. We can't have, yeah, I can't have a, a wackadoodle night without this. Runaway balloon blamed for Florida power outage. It was a red heart. This was in Kissimmee. Kissimmee, actually, but Kissimmee, because it's a red heart. A mylar balloon. A, a utility officials in Florida City said 339 customers lost electricity when a Mylar balloon collided with power lines. Oh my God, somebody's going to have to write a law. No more Mylar balloons with helium in it. <coughs> Excuse me. Apparently 339 homes lost power Monday after the balloon made from a m m metal metalized, is that how you say that? Nylon substance or mylar. Why in the hell didn't you just say mylar? Touched the power lines and caused damage. The KUA said the incident happened in Kissimmee's Siesta Lago neighborhood and crews removed three other mylar balloons from utility wires in the area Monday morning. The KUA offered some safety tips for handling metallic balloons. Here we go. Write this down, people. Safety tips for balloons. Be sure to secure the helium balloon with a weight heavy enough to prevent it from drifting away, preferably a small child. Never bundle metallic balloons together, unless attached to a small child. Keep metallic balloons indoors and never release them outside, unless attached to a small child. Never attach metallic streamers to any balloon, whether it's latex or metallic. Make sure the latex balloon is not really a condom. And do not attempt to retrieve a balloon or any foreign object tangled in power lines. Instead, call KUA. Ta-ta-ta-ta! Here they come to save the day! KUA is on the way! Oh, wow, that just totally sucked. <laughs> oh, good thing I'm not in this for the ratings. Uh oh, Mortal Wombat left. Later, brothers. Later, brother Joey. Why have you been? Um, why have you been sh uh, shit out over a cliff, my dear? I know you've got breathing issues, darling. <sighs> I love my Buoto, but he and I need to have a chat. <laughs> or maybe I just need to get him some more oils. Maybe that's what it is. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's a Mylar balloon. <laughs> Okay. Yes, I have notifications. Hi, Bo Diddy. How you doing, sweetheart? I hope you're having an awesome wackadoodle Wednesday. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is more like it. Oh, that was something that... Wow, how to make a man happy. Feed him, sleep with him, leave him in peace... Uh, don't check his phone messages and don't bother him with his movements. Wow. Uh, don't bother him with his movements. Are we talking bowel movements here? <laughs> yeah. And then there's like 53 ways to make a woman happy. No, not really. Not really. That's just high maintenance ones. Those of us that are not high maintenance, well, yeah, whatever. Let me see. Um, where was that at? I gotta find this. I thought it was rather witty. 
um, I think it was on my essential oils page. There it is. There it is. Health and wellness. Okay. Um, I hear this a lot. I want to join your team, but I'm not a salesperson. Now she's talking about because she's, she sells essential oils. Yes, dear. What was that? I don't know if there's that many different kinds of wine attracts because I don't drink wine. Last time I drank wine, um, oh, you must register your balloons with the FAA and have a background check before being allowed to purchase the balloons. Oh, wow, that would totally suck. Okay, um, here we go. Number one, you shared a Coke can with your name on it that causes everyone to look for a Coke with their name on it. Sold. Number two, you posted a picture of a delicious meal item from a restaurant that caused all of your friends to go to try it themselves. Sold. You shared the latest book that you read that caused all of your friends to download it or rush to Barnes and Nobles. Sold. You went to see a movie and loved it so much that you shared it with your friends and that caused them to take their entire entire family to see it. Sold. You received a great deal at a local store, a cheap discount. You couldn't wait to share it with your friends so, you t so they could take advantage of the savings. Sold. The only difference is, now see, you sold people on all of those different things. Now the only difference is you didn't get paid for those referrals. Coca-Cola did, the restaurant did, Barnes & Noble did, the movie theater did, and the local store did. So see, you can sell things and you don't even know you're selling them. But what I say is sometimes what you sell shouldn't cost anything. You know, like selling ideas or sharing ideas. Just like, you know, because she's, she's trying to tell people that you can sell oils. Well, okay, I could if I really wanted to, if I really wanted to get out there and bust the pavement or whatever the hell, I could sell oils. But I don't, I know entirely too many people that have tried something, tried some product, and then had buyer's remorse. Because it's like, wow, this cost me out the ass for this shit, and it's not doing what they told me it would do. So instead of me going out there and trying to sell shit to people, if somebody has a problem, I give them some oil. And let them try it and see if it works for them. That way, if it doesn't work for them, they're not out any money. And they aren't pissed off at me because I sold them something that isn't working. I would just as soon give it to them. And if they decide they wish to purchase some more, it's on them. But I'm not going to go and force anything down anybody's throat on any of that shit. I just don't believe in... That's why I would not be a really good salesperson. And I think that's probably because I work in, an, in a business that does sell... And I get to deal with people that come back with, it's doing this. I just bought this. I just spent yada yada dollars on this. And now it's doing this. So are you going to pay for that? Or am I going to get stuck with it? I've, I've been involved in the retail business for, cripes, on and off for over 30 years. You know, whether I worked at a grocery store or working at a car dealership or what have you. So I know how the general public can be. And I would just as soon, you know, I'm not going to go out and make myself go absolutely broke giving oils to people. But you know what? If somebody has a problem and I have something that I think will help them, I'm going to give them the oils. Because I'd, I would much rather see people be healthy you know, then make a buck. Call me crazy, but that's just kind of the way I am. Um, to me, money isn't that... Oh, well, you're welcome, darling. They, I hope they're helping. Oh, duh. You said you're loving it. I do love my oils, and I use my oils every day. Every day. 
So. Um, and I have, I actually, some of the guys at work have gotten to where, <laughs> okay, a few of them have actually purchased oils from me, but that's after several months of coming up and going, I don't feel so good, or I've got this, or I've got that. And I, I carry a little oils medicine cabinet in my purse, which is not, I mean, it's not a whole hell of a, it's not a lot of oils. I have like six different oils in my purse that I carry all the time. And, uh, Two of them, I, I carry the, the peppermint beadlets and the on guard beadlets, which are just little bitty, little bitty things um, that, you know, you can just pop in your mouth. And um, the peppermint is great for getting your sinuses to clear um, or to uh, help with if you've got a tickle in your throat or whatever. The on guard is great for if you're just starting to feel a little bit on the icky side, like maybe you're trying to come down with something. Then they come up and I go, okay, let me see what I got, which I just had to restock my on guard and my peppermint beadlets because yeah, we've had some sick people at work. So, and, and I, I give them those because I don't want to get sick. So, you know, I'm taking it myself and then I also give it to them to get them over it so that they don't pass it on to me because I don't want that shit. So yeah, it's kind of selfish of me actually in a roundabout way. I don't want whatever they've got, so therefore I get them healthy so I don't get it. <laughs> That's my circular logic of the day. But, um, yeah, and my part switch Dr. Cabinet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not practicing medicine without a license. I'm not. I'm just sharing oils. <laughs> There's a difference. And people are happy when I do so. So, let's see. I just have a little bit more time left. So, let me find one more silliness um, before I get out of here. I think maybe. Let me go check out the pig. I haven't been to the pig for a while. See what those those two crazy fellers in Mexifornia, southern Mexifornia, are up to. Hmm. A is gun control. It is a noun. It's a correct Nick scheme that disarms law abiding citizens to make it safe for armed and dangerous criminals. That's including those in positions of nanny state authority to ply their trade. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. And that was probably Hambo saying that. In the quotable quote section, you won't get gun control by disarming law-abiding citizens. There's only one way to get real gun control. Disarm the thugs and the criminals. Lock them up, and if you don't actually throw away the key, at least lose it for a long time. It's a nasty truth, but those who seek to inflict harm are not phased by gun controllers. I happen to know this from personal experience. That's Ronald Reagan. Because it's his last election year or whatever the hell that doesn't mean that he's going to go away that's just my little bit of prognostication there um tasty tidbits of the day five reasons the world is going to end this year probably on february 14th so did you guys realize hambo pointed this out several years ago and i haven't forgotten it that's one of the few things you know one of those things that just kind of sticks in the memory valentine's day february the 14th that's the day where guys buy flowers and chocolates for their girlfriends i never really that got really old really fast for this old lady because yeah, I would get flowers and chocolates, and then at the end of the month, I would get the bill from the florist and have to go pay for it. So, no, I'm not one of those that wants flowers and chocolates. It just, I'm totally ruined on that. But did you know that February the 13th is National Blowjob Day? So apparently you're buying the flowers and chocolates to pay for what you got the day before. <laughs> if you got it the day before. In any case, is World War III going to break out this year? I may run a little bit over. I hope not, but let's see. Um, and blasting the Earth into nuclear fire. Or are we about to be wiped out by an asteroid? Or be sucked into a huge black hole created by a large um, hadron co collider? 
I don't know. It could be all three, if you believe the rantings of prophets, conspiracy theories, and mad people on YouTube. So here are five reasons not to bother sticking to your New Year's resolutions, which I don't make those anymore either. Um, you thought it was steak blowjob and leave me alone day? I don't know. Uh, how If you want to be left alone, you aren't going to get steak or a blowjob, darling. Uh, in any case, number one, Ghostbusters 2 predicted the world would end on February 14th, 2016. That's a Valentine's Day bummer, says Bill Murray. Um, number two, back in 2011, NASA scientists said that the poles would shift in 2016. Now, is that the people in Poland or the Arctic poles? Inquiring minds want to know. Number three, Dangleberry is the Antichrist and is going to destroy the world on June 6th. That's according to an online conspiracy theorist, David uh, Montang, I think that's how you say it, who firmly believes that the Bible makes it clear that Dangleberry is actually the Antichrist, which, <laughs> okay. Number four, an asteroid will hit on May 16th, 2016, followed by a black hole created by CERN. I thought if an asteroid hit, it would create a black hole. It would make a big hole or maybe just a dent. I don't know. And finally, number five, the Bible says Jesus is coming back. Well, sort of. According to a slightly dubious looking website, The Mark of the Beast, the end is end 3,431 years later in 2016 AD when God's children will enter heavenly Cana. God's people will be totally and permanently delivered from sin and Jesus will come again. Thank you, baby Jesus. The second coming of Christ will occur at the exact time predicted in Daniel's prophecy. In 2016, there will be an end to sin in the world and Jesus will come the second time and then the world will, uh, end of the world will come. So, all this coming and no going. I hate when that happens. Oh, well. I am out of time, everybody. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocketeer here on World Truth Radio and RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 9. Also on the WorldTruth 